And uh, now this was a research reactor, wasn't it? That's right. And yeah. you're also very much interested in power reactors at Atomic International, right? This is true, yeah. Well, you brought this very nice um, model of a power reactor here. This is your sodium research reactor. And we have a film of Doreen, you showing Doreen around this a week ago Saturday. And by film clip, let's zip up from Science Lab to your laboratory again, shall we? Fine. And then right. would you take it, this one's at the top of the hill, is it not? This is right. This is in the Simi Hills then, up above Canoga Park. All right, now here we are in the car going up the road there. And that's where those cowboys have made a lot of those pictures in those rocks, aren't they? Yes, this has is, is been a great spot for making cowboy films. This is the entrance to our sodium reactor experiment area. Uh, this is a large uh, power reactor experiment. It operates at some 20,000 kilowatts of heat. Uh, as a matter of fact, this reactor achieved full power just last evening. Uh, I think I read something about it in the paper today as we were coming over here. You may have heard about it on the radio today. Was yes, yes, I believe. this is right. Isn't it, um, serving its power for the Edison Company? Yes, the Southern California Edison Company does have a uh, turbo generator unit, a steam boiler, which they operate, and this produces power for Southern California. That's the company right next door at the right. top of the mountain there, isn't it? Here we're getting these film badges again, which must be worn in the neighborhood of any nuclear reactor installation. These are the control rods on top of this sodium power reactor. The reactor itself is below floor level and extends down some 25, 30 feet below the floor level. These rods move up and down in these casings. These are neutron absorbing rods which either start the reactor up as you pull them out or shut it down as you uh, reinsert them. You, the must ha you must have a lot of cement or lead casing around them for protection. Haven't yes, you? the radiation shield on top is about six feet thick, made up of ex extra heavy concrete. These rods have their motors on top. The reactor itself consists of a uh, whole nest of uranium rods around which we have some graphite, and then we use sodium to remove the heat from these rods as a nuclear fission occurs. People working on top of the reactor put on these shoes and these shoes are not to protect the people, but to protect the reactor and keep dust out of the these holes that were visible on top in which the fuel elements are inserted. I was wondering why those, the tops were colored circles and they weren't, I couldn't tell if they were on the reactor or not. Well, these little plates they put on top of the various fuel element channels indicate... Looks like somebody was about to play shuffleboard. Yeah, it, it yeah. indicates what sort of... Uh, material is in that particular uh, position. Uh, one color indicates fuel elements, another color indicates a control rod, another color indicates an instrument thimble. Uh, some colors just represent blank spaces. And this way the, the operators know what, what they have in which position. Those were pretty big boots for Doreen, weren't they? Yes, I think these are, these are not designed for, uh, for small girls. This is the fuel element transfer cast. These elements after they're removed from the reactor are extremely radioactive and must be withdrawn into a shielded cask. And this has lead shielding around it. And this is the, that's the that's outer. That's a giant lead tube. It's a it? giant lead tube. That thing looks like it weighed several hundred tons. I'll bet it does, doesn't it's, it? It doesn't weigh quite that much, but about 60 tons, yes. It was heavy. Uh, and it moves along on an overhead crane. The elements are drawn up into this thing from the reactor and then are moved over to a, a cleaning area and then to a storage area where they're stored until some of the energy is decayed and they can be handled a little more conveniently. Doreen didn't know she was going to be a crane operator that day, no, did she? No, no that was fine. And this is your control room for the reactor, isn't it? Yes, all the instruments to monitor, to uh, control the operation of the reactor located in this particular room. The, the uh, fellow who is sitting at the control desk surely looked young to me. Uh, do you use young men in your organization? Yes, all these operators um, are fairly young fellows. All they need is a high school education with some major in science. Uh, this Jack, Jack Dick Phelps is one of the reactor operators. We normally have three operators 
plus a chief operator on each shift. This reactor runs around the clock, 24 hours a day and seven days a week. In other words, once you warm it up, you keep it right. going. For keep instance, it going. this week you started it again, and it will go for some time then. Well, it's been running at lower powers for some time, and we just brought it up to full power last evening. These are some of the meters which indicate the positions of, the, of these control rods, which move in and out of the reactor to either stop this chain reaction or uh, let it proceed. And the buttons and the levers you push either move them up or down. There are little meters on there that indicate the exact position and, and inches on, of each rod. All the meters in the back indicate uh, any number of things, the temperatures and the pressures and the flow rates, neutron level and uh, this sort of thing. But this, this is the nerve center of the entire reactor installation. This is where it's all controlled. This control desk in the front has, in a small way, some of the meters that are larger on, on the back, so that the operator has a direct view immediately in front of, of him. Of he has a full control of heat pressure and all those right. things. And right. if anything gets too warm, the pressure too much, it automatically takes care of itself in, a, in an instrument like that, doesn't this it? This is correct, yeah. Those were strange-looking Geiger counters. One was almost like a gun. Yes. Uh, these all are instruments to monitor the radiation level. Uh, there are three of them there on top. One is called a, has the name of Cutie Pie, and this is the one, uh, this happens to be Juno here that you have, and it has a, a door in it which can shield out uh, the various types of radiation. You can measure either gamma or beta or alpha radiation. Uh, this one is cu uh, called Cutie Pie, and this measures uh, beta and gamma radiation. Well, which type of radiation is most serious to the workers around there? Gamma radiation is normally the most, most serious radiation. It's the most penetrating of the three types of radiation, and it's the thing we're looking for. This is a different, this monitors the number of neutrons that are escaping from the reactor. It's a fast and slow neutron monitor, and this picks up uh, and tells the number of neutrons. It's really only the fast neutrons that have any real effect. Again, these are used only as uh, to monitor. We've never had any overexposure of individuals, and this is the purpose of having these things, is to make sure that nobody is ever overexposed. And then you had a gentleman who followed Doreen around, and you around too, most of the time, didn't you, just to keep an eye on things? Uh, they try to do this all the uh, time, yes. A health physicist, I believe you right. said he was. I noticed you had a sort of TV there. Could you explain that? Uh, we use a TV uh, camera there. We have a camera down below looking at some of the components uh, below the floor which are very radioactive and we can view them here without being exposed to radiation. Oh, this is, this was fun. Uh, remember Doreen was spent half an hour on this, I think. What, what did you call that? That had a long name. This is called a master slave manipulator and it's a device whereby you can handle highly radioactive materials with some semblance of of using your fingers. It tries to uh, imitate your finger motion inside with the motion outside. And here the, the technique is shown for lifting out a container out of a shielded cask inside of a uh, what we call a hot cell. Actually, Doreen is looking through about four feet of lead glass into this particular hot cell. That, that's interesting that there was so much lead in that glass. I think I heard one of the technicians say that that was 60% lead in that glass. It's about we 60% could look it. Through it. still look through it, but it's uh, very good protection against radiation, and this is the reason it's used. Those are really a lot of fun to operate. I, I tried it for a few minutes, and I felt that my, my fingers were about <laughs> six feet long, and I was reaching way into that, that hot cell of yours. It's really quite a technique for, for using these things. I, well, that makes it very safe for handling and right. pouring and right. uh, working with your materials. That invisible light, you might say, gamma radiation, is quite a problem, isn't it? When you can't yes. see it, it's uh, it certainly is. a little hard to work with sometimes. Well, these two sets of uh, rods, uh, they look heavy. They are heavy. Uh, one of them, uh, one set is made of steel, and the other set is made of uranium. Did you tell the difference, Doreen? Yes, uh, the uranium seems a lot heavier. Uranium is about the heaviest thing I take. It's over, it's over twice as heavy as, as steel. This is a what is called a hand and foot counter. 
and this counter is uh, used to monitor the radiation on the surface of the hands and feet as the person is leaving. And to illustrate the operation of this, uh, Doreen is going to put my watch, which has a luminous dial on it, into one of these chambers here to indicate that something does happen if you do have radiation there. Uh, the lights flash up on the, the outside of the right hand there. Ultimately, a sign comes on that says decontamination required. And when this sign comes on, then you have to go find somebody who will do something about it. There's a health physicist has an office right next door. He so takes care no of you. Problem, it looks you know. like Doreen was safe according to that sign. She was safe according to that sign, yes. But you can check these instruments by using uh, isotopes such as you have in your... This, was, this was our last view from the hill, wasn't it? This That's is a view of the entire installation, the reactor building, uh, which is a concrete building. The reactor's inside of this. And then off to the left here, there are lines coming across which indicate the uh, are for sodium. Um, the left-hand side is the turbo generator and the generator. This, this is this is it. We're back from the film now, yes. and we're right in the studio. And this is Dr. Laughlin's very fine model. Uh, we uh, we're right at about this spot with the camera. The last time, yes, we? we we're looking at the same thing. Uh, I might start on this side, indicating. Would, would you just point these out, Dr. Right. Laughlin? The things we saw first, we saw in during the film. We did see this. Uh, fuel transfer cask here. The reactor core is under the floor at this point, underneath. This hot sodium, which gets its heat from the nuclear fission, comes out in pipes over to a, a heat exchanger, which uh, gives its heat up to more sodium, which comes out through these pipes here over to a steam generator, where we boil, boil water and produce steam. And the steam then is transferred over to the turbine generator on this side, and then the a turbine generator runs a, a generator here and produces electric power. And the Edison Company picks up that power and distributes it all over Southern California, this doesn't it? This is right, Southern I was California. Surprised to hear that. Well, Dr. Loftness, uh, I surely stand in awe of you nuclear scientists and your profound knowledge of all this invisible business that goes on under the floor. Uh, and I think that, Doreen, don't you think that he's put it down on our level very yeah, easily today? Thank you. Well, it's surely been a pleasure to well, have you with thank us. Thank you very much, Mr. Ryan. Uh, Dr. Loftness, if you'd like to look in next week, we're going to have a program about electronic computers, and we're going to have a...